Welcome to A Taste of Mercy. Today we're doing salsa recipes. Uh, there's a, quite a variety we have here in front of us. Uh, many of them are fruit and uh, some vegetable recipes as well, instead of all the old traditional tomato type uh, salsa recipes. To the center we have our traditional tomato type salsa, and to my left, uh, melon type salsa, a pineapple salsa, a cucumber cilantro, and over here on the right, a, a watermelon salsa as well. So, you know, not your, your traditional fare by any means. Uh, Sit back, join us, and we'll, we'll uh, get started. Well, today's first recipe is going to be a watermelon salsa. So to start out, I'm going to need a lime. Okay. I and like watermelon salsa, Ron. This it's is... always fresh. and You don't think about taking our fruits and adding them for salsas. This is kind of unusual. You know, this is good for, say, putting with fish or chicken. Okay. And Off now, the grill. The fruit-type salsas, they're a little bit more delicate and they're not going to last as long. This I would not keep overnight. Okay. I'll, I'll get rid of it. Well, it's going to taste so good you don't need yeah. to keep mm -hmm. it overnight. So we're going to dice up the lime. Yeah, you just slicked that right off and just peeled it really quickly. This is the tangy part of the recipe that helps to enhance the sweetness. It's always interesting different combinations. The lime is going to enhance with vitamin C content for our dish. Watermelon does not have very much vitamin C content, but it is a really great source of vitamin A. It's hidden with the carotenoids, the bright red color of it hides um, with it. And then you have to take out all the seeds. So we don't want this too small a dice because our you know, it's a lot more, more delicate. You yeah. Know, kind of when you go to spoon it out. Lots of we go out. Okay. Right. So we've got the uh, one lime. We need about two and a half cup of the watermelon. Okay. So then I need uh, call for one green onion, finely diced. But these are real small, so I'm going to give them, okay. give them two. Some a little sulfides in those to. Um, help with cholesterol. This will be a great low sodium dish for anybody. We're not adding um, any sodium and it's a potassium enriched food both with the cucumbers and the um, watermelon. And we're going to add this cucumber. We need to peel okay. this and seed this first. No, mm -hmm. just, you have a just, pretty fancy utensil there. Just, it's one of those just, safety ones. Make sure I work on it. Lots of water in this dish. And we're going to drag the seed out of there. Well, those persons who have diverticulitis will like that. No seeds left in their cucumbers. It's an easy way of removing that for people. I'm going to cut it into some fairly small pieces here. You can get all of this ingredients at the farmer's market here in the summer. That would always enhance the taste of it. That'd be great. Actually, any of these uh, recipes are going to be... The salsas. Salsas. Okay. Well, we've got some cilantro. I just need uh, a couple tablespoons of cilantro. Some people are a little confused, cilantro versus... Uh, Flat leaf parsley. Um, flat leaf parsley, Chinese parsley, coriander. Mm -hmm. So the parsley is the leaf and the coriander is the, the fruit of the, mm -hmm. of the uh, cilantro. And, and cilantro is also so, called uh, Chinese parsley mm -hmm. as well. So. It's a multiple herb. So then we want just a uh, dash of salt and, and we chop up that jalapeno, pepper. don't we? We do. 
Mm -hmm. Now, I, I did wash the jalapeno off, or all, all the fruit and mm -hmm. veggies off first, but this, you know, when you're doing this, make this last so that, mm -hmm. you know. You, and I'm standing you, back. You, you, don't want the, you don't want the fumes, that you don't want to handle the cilantro or the, the jalapeno and then touch your lips or around your right. eyes. So I always wear gloves and a shield when I'm doing yeah. this. Taking the seeds out. Now you, depending on how hot you like your salsas, you can use, I use the seeds. I think with the salsa you wouldn't yeah. use. And I, I always take all of ours because I, mm -hmm. I just can't tolerate them like I used to. But, but uh, <laughs> you know, there's all your heat or not. It's okay. a bigger share of your heat. Okay. Well, and a jalapeno is not the hottest pepper out there. And then all these recipes we're doing, you can you know just just pick and choose and, and put which which your preference is. Okay. And we just need uh, two teaspoons here, so okay. especially this fruit, and we're not going to use all this. So we should have everything in there. I'm going to mix this up. Right. It's one thing about the salsas we're making today, they're all beginning very colorful. On there. Okay. You know, nice nice colors, color. cool, refreshing. Uh, that's mm -hmm. going to go excellent with fish or chicken, mm -hmm. either one. Um, right off the grill? Again, you know, let I, it set for a couple hours? I would hours. let it set for you know, at least a half an hour mm -hmm. before I use it to okay. let those flavors mingle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Bring out that jalapeno. Okay, looks great. Like time to make salsa again. Salsa again. This time we're going to do some melon, and we're going to do three kinds of melon in this recipe. We're going to do the cantaloupe, the honeydew, okay. and a watermelon. Oh, that'll be a beautiful color so combination. Some nice colors. And we'll take and uh, get about a cup okay. of the cantaloupe. It's always yeah. nice to lay that flat. Get that like to peeled off. Peel that off. You can see that's a netted melon. That's what they with all that. Um, description, they call that a netted melon. With all the little mm -hmm. design in it. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a great area for growing melons. Between Thompson, Illinois and Muscatine, Iowa are some of the best melon growing of this area. Muscatine melons. Mm -hmm. At least I like to do just a little smaller. Pieces. Pieces. And we're need about a cup here. Okay. Pretty close. So about yeah. a half a melon would yield just a little over a cup of this, this size. About a fourth of a melon here, actually. Mm -hmm. About a cup here as well. You know, salsas originally, you know, were a tomato base with some mm -hmm. cilantro and onion, and you know, for hundreds of years, and you, you, uh, really you did them with, with chips, and mm -hmm. yeah, they've really evolved since then, and uh, you know. So it's just a flavorful kind of, combination. Uh, any kind of fruit eats. and vegetable combination you can come up with mm -hmm. is is realistic. I give you just personal preference as to what you want to do. And fruit in itself is just a wonderful, rich sweetness and aromatic. Well, that's the uh, thing too with um, using the, the the fresh fruits. You. We're talking about put it with more than just chip. Put it in with the mm -hmm. with the f vegetables or with the uh, entrees and the fish. But you could also put this as a, a dressing on a salad. Mm -hmm. You could put this on top of a soup. Right. You could uh, actually just take it just like it is and eat it as a salad. As a salad. I'm gonna watch Good out for combination my combination there. Watch out for my seeds here. Well, our melons are natural sources of vitamin A, vitamin C. They're great sources of potassium, and people on a low-sodium diet often need additional sources of potassium that helps them to actually control their blood pressure even better than some of their medications do. 
potassium enhancing. Now, if we were on a kidney diet, we would want to be a little cautious about how much potassium that we would put in, but uh, most people aren't having to follow that restriction. This is some of the uh, jalapeno pepper that I saved okay. from the last recipe, mm -hmm. and we it's just, just need a, a little teaspoon, a teaspoon of that. So that's that's close enough. Okay. It's that capsaicin that's in that um, jalapeno that gives it that aromatic flavor, and um, we have to be careful about it with the heat around our eyes and mouth. This is a little fresh mint, as opposed to the cilantro. It's just a little bit more delicate there. Mm -hmm to enhance the fruits. You, yeah, mint is an aromatic compound once you are breaking open the leaves. You can just smell that aroma, the freshness. So not just in your mint tea and mint juleps, but no. in our oh, salsas too. And a little lime juice. No. And we need about a tablespoon. Now, if you warmed up that lime, would it squeeze easier? A little bit, yes, and uh, it, it would peel easier as well. We need a little bit more, maybe about a tablespoon. How do you judge that? Well, that was a <laughs> tablespoon, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm going to say a tablespoon of orange juice as well. So between this, we've used five different fruits in here, three melons and a lime and an orange. Yeah, you're right. So that's uh, all we need Mix here. Mix that together. And I think I would serve this next to salmon. It would be one of my favorite. Great. So you got some good colors there, and then the the taste when you eat that, you know, with that citrus juices in there is going to be. Great enhancer for the. Mm -hmm. You right, did a so nice job of mincing. We got okay. Enough in here, and let's put a little mint on it. A little mint on there as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of set that off. Okay. So again, you know, nice and fresh, and uh, you can use any kind of melon. Just melon salsa, you know, just okay. honeydew, cantaloupe, whichever you want to do, or you can just do all all the same. So a good melon salsa. Nancy, it's actually going to be a pineapple salsa. So oh. again, we're doing more of the, the fruit type salsas okay. to start with, and then we'll do a couple with a little bit of the vegetables that are meant for this. Okay. All right. All Traditional. Right. So after first, we start with uh, fresh pineapple. Okay. And stand back. Stand back. Slide that off. Get that off there. Move you know, it to takes the side. 18 months for a pineapple to grow. 18 months. 18 months to just take it apart like that. <laughs> So those are the eyes, the bromelades, actually, it's a bromelade plant. It is one of those fruits that um, is kind of has some healing properties to it. Smell that it's an aromatic compound one also. Each of those eyes are from like almost a separate little plant growing into it. So on this, we just need, I think, about two-thirds of a cup. Uh, this okay. is enough for about, you know, about four, four servings. Mm -hmm. Just cut it all up here. How do you select the pineapple? I mean, Something that catches a little give into it. It's not real and green in color. It. It's just kind of, yeah, you don't want it real mm -hmm. soft. To, uh, just some of your other melons, a little, little give mm -hmm. a little, a little color, a little yellow. We're getting a little extra pineapple here. This is going to serve about four people. Because mm -hmm. with salsas, they're side dishes. And again, this is the chili pepper, okay. jalapeno. Very low calorie, all of our peppers are. Good sources of vitamin C and vitamin A. 
and we're finding out some of the health benefits for the heart with the capsaicin. Also, um, people with rheumatoid arthritis are enjoying some of the benefits of capsaicin. Take some of the pain away. Uh, it's got a lot of a lot of healing properties too. Mm -hmm. Fruit and vegetables in general. That's why we're trying to get people to eat more and more of them. That's a beautiful red onion. Now we just need a little bit of red onion for the okay. uh, so just a tablespoon. That would be the other flavor enhancer to bring out. Usually you've got three major flavor enhancers in a salsa. The hotness of the peppers. Then traditionally, almost all salsas have some onion of some kind in them. And then some other citric fruit juice. Now on the red pepper, we just need a little bit of that as well, uh, about a half a cup. So you just um, slice off the bottom. You don't have to seed it that way. And it keeps all the seeds in it. I, that's always a trick that you have done there in the kitchen. Some recipes in salsas, the peppers are roasted. Yeah, you could do that with this as well. And that would just give you another f additional flavor there. Okay. You could actually just use the canned pimento mm -hmm. and put in there if you wanted to okay. as well. The, or the candles like and peppers. The fresh. I want to put a little bit of cilantro in here as well. Okay. Just, Put some more color in it. Just a little bit. To another, another flavor. Another flavor there. Yeah, that's a, I think the fun thing about salsa is you can just keep mixing and matching and yeah. um, do what you like, what you have on hand. And cilantro is one of those things where people that they really like or they, <laughs> they can't stand it. It doesn't seem to be any. No, it surrounds it. Ground, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, that's all we have in there, and there's just not much to it. But the colors are great. The, the reds, and reds and the greens mm -hmm. and yellow. What would you serve this in with? Uh, this would go real great with salmon. Have you okay. taken a, a like a pan seared okay. salmon or something like that, mm -hmm. or you just just a little bit of olive oil? Some of those that we've and, made before, fried. like that right. um, teriyaki one and the honey glazed one. That would be really great with that one. So you could look back at some of our previous recipes online. And Absolutely. get some of the salmon recipes and serve it with this. And again, a little, little sprig on top there. Okay. And so we have a uh, fresh pineapple salsa. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, good with just by itself, actually, or okay. you know, a great number of different uh, yeah. entrees, soups, salads, all by itself. It's, I'm going to serve it with my salmon. Sounds good. Nancy, we're going to do a uh, cilantro cucumber salsa. We're going to get away from the fruits and okay. go into the vegetables. Okay. Got to get some vegetables in. We'll start off. We need a cucumber. I peel it. I just need half of this. Okay. Put it off to the side. Going to seed it again. Seed it again. All right. Spoons work great for that to yeah. take out that another all-purpose kitchen utensil. And I have some grape tomatoes. We need about okay. a cup of grape tomatoes. I just cut those in cut half. Cut them in half. You know, when you're cutting open fruits and vegetables, you're exposing the surfaces. And actually, nutritionally, um, if we eat them within a short time period, then we're not losing any of the nutritional value. And some things like tomatoes, we actually could enhance the nutritional value of, of the uptake. We're going to add a little canola oil to this recipe, mm -hmm. and um, it will help us to take up the aromatic compounds and the lycopene, which is a, a phytochemical that we're finding very beneficial in heart disease and in some cancer prevention. We're also seeing lycopene being used um, for macular degeneration as to protect the eyes from damage. Yellow pepper, you could use uh, an orange bell pepper, okay. work fine though. Vitamin C content here going in. This is going to be a very low calorie um, salsa here. Our vegetables basically have very few calories, very low carbohydrate. I'm going to do a little bit, I just. 
I like the different texture look already going in here. We've got mm -hmm. slices, dices. Just need two tablespoons here. So another little pinch of cilantro. So then I'm putting a little lime juice in here, about two tablespoons. Helps to keep it fresh. Vitamin C is um, one of our antioxidants. So as we cut those surfaces of those vegetables open, this will help to protect them from oxidizing as quickly. Put a teaspoon of canola oil okay. in there. This is just to kind of meld the flavors together and oh. enhance the uptake teaspoon of, honey. of the lycopene. Again, you could get the honey as a local purveyor. Oh. And this one here, instead of doing a jalapeno pepper, we'll put some uh, crushed pepper flakes okay. in there, okay? And so these, you could use this at any time of the year, then? Yeah. And a little bit goes a long way on this as well. It calls for like a half a teaspoon. And, uh, this is, works well for like if you're doing a stir fry or something like that okay. as well. Mm -hmm. And then a teaspoon or so of salt. And if you were on a low sodium diet, you would not even need to need add that for that little pinch. Yeah, I think it kind of helps the cucumber a little bit, picks up the flavor mm -hmm. a little bit, brings it out. But... So does the lime juice and the cilantro too. Yeah. Okay, look at that colorful. So this one was a pretty quick one to put together. It doesn't take much time at all. Well, as your steak is grilling, you could just be combining all of these wonderful flavors. And as all salsas, it needs to sit for a little bit to enhance the, yeah, the those, melding of the flavors. Those flavors come around a little bit. Okay. Um, we have cucumber? A cilantro cucumber salsa. Okay. okay. And uh, great, again, which is about anything, but uh, this I think would work out real well also if you had, uh, say, it's just a tossed salad mm -hmm. and to put that over the top, top of your tossed salad. As yeah. a dressing? Yeah. I'll keep that in mind, Ron. Last but not least, we're going to do a fresh tomato salsa, okay. kind of the traditional, you know, traditional one that everybody makes. You know, their their, their version. version, and there there are there's just oh hundreds of versions of yeah. this. And uh, we're going to start off with the uh, fresh tomatoes, six okay. or seven tomatoes. The ones I have here are, are fairly large, so I. Okay. And do a little less. I like having the skin on it. It still gives some, some substance to it. Now, if you needed, some people like to take the seeds all out. So a plum tomato works really well to do that. So get those tomatoes in here. Okay. Now, if you get too much juice later on, you can just drain that away. Right. At the end, we'll just pour off okay. what you don't need. And it'll, it'll water out some. Mm -hmm. Especially once we add the salt to it. Now, right. the salt does not have to be added to this recipe, although it does enhance um, the flavor. Calls for an onion. We're using a, a yellow onion, but you could use a red a also. Red one, no problem. Fresh green. I didn't see you start crying as you were peeling that one, so the allyl sulfide is the compound that does that which is, again, that heart-protective um, nutrient. I'm not going to use quite all that because this is a pretty large onion. It's the sulfur compounds that are in the onions that make us cry, Ron. No. And of course, there's all those tricks, you know, hold it under water, peel it away. I still think it just doesn't yeah. help. Well, I think deep ventilation does help, yeah. you know, especially... Don't touch your eyes, it, just like with the jalapeno. It makes Keep a difference how, eyes. how much you're doing, how long mm -hmm. you're doing it. So, yeah. uh, yeah. We're doing this, but if I have to do a half a gallon of onions, that's a little different. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. Maybe a bunch of cilantro. Again, releasing those aromatic compounds. The cilantro doesn't hold up very well. It's, it gets wet. It's, it's, uh, well, you've cut it up in fine pieces. You've released the water also of it. So, um, But once you put it into the tomatoes, the vitamin C content of the tomatoes, well, antioxidant properties. We're doing some chopped garlic. I got a uh, tablespoon mm -hmm. here. With, I think the recipe calls for six teaspoons, okay. and I'm thinking like about a half a teaspoon is mm -hmm. 
per clove. Or yeah. What's the six teaspoons? Six cloves. Six right. cloves. Okay. Uh, a jalapeno pepper. Okay. I'll stand back. Okay. You know, we use um, salsa just as a enhancer, but the nutritional benefit of this dish is just really awesome with all of the strong vitamin C content to it. Vitamin C is one of our minerals that we use to help fight um, infections. It also gives us the properties of collagen. Collagen is the tissues that help to support all, all of us everywhere in our body. So vitamin C is a strong component of building collagen. So we want to keep that in our diet all throughout our life. It's a water-soluble vitamin too, so we do need to replace it every day. It's usually about 70 to 90 milligrams that we need, and we're going to get plenty of it in this dish. This is only one jalapeno, which you know, is really uh, too, too bad. You know. This is going to, we can feed the neighbors with this one. Yeah, especially when you're sitting there eating the, the, uh, the chip. chips, you know, and it, it's... Now, it's healthy depending the on how many chips you eat, right? The low part, yeah. the calorie part. Now watch those chips. They're buying some of the baked ones, and there's certainly um, all kinds of different chips out there now. Some of them have um, flaxseed added to them, different beans. I had an Arboro rice chip last week that with the whole grains. So make sure if you're buying your chips, whole grains, baked, and as lightly salted as possible. Many of the chips are even coming in an unsalted version, too. About 10 chips is a serving, so you got to stop at 10 yes. chips. You're supposed to stop. So yeah. You're supposed to stop, yes. <laughs> OK, so that's juice of one lime, and then uh, just a pinch of kosher salt. Okay. Now, the kosher salt. salt is still sodium. Yeah. Just It's cut differently. You know, you could just layer that and let people stir it as, you know, as a center very, of the it plate would, or it would look a very nice. buffet. Pica de gallo is actually what the Spanish yeah. call this. Um, salsa, Spanish word for salsas. Sauce. sauce. Or sauce. Mm -hmm. So when you see pica de gallo on some of the menus, this is the fresh as it is. If you wanted to, um, Cook this later, you could, and then can it up. I've seen a lot of people ask, you know, can you, can you freeze it as opposed to mm, can it? It doesn't, doesn't work freeze so well, very well you, because you, of the high water uh, content of it. I know a lot of people do do cook it. You, know, yeah. you don't have to have a, you know, a real high tip, no. but you, you have to be able to get that seal on there. Yeah. So, you know, as okay. your, your fresh tomato salsa, your, it's just your basic, uh, you can modify it however you want to. Like I said, you know, if you want mm -hmm. to put Put more cilantro or a different pepper in there, or more of. Um, and again, the better the tomato, the the better the taste. Mm -hmm. So it looks wonderful, Ron. Huh?